short schoolgirl skirt with hooped, multicoloured, thick wool socks pulled to the knee. An old woman, long silver grey hair plaited. She must be in her eighties. Baggy old jumper, her huge mountain boots that graced the town pavements. And everywhere I went in that town, eventually her powerful image would appear before me. People were forgiving and she floated as if detached, but yet still a part of us all who dared and dreamed to stand out against the corporate business tide that swallowed your good nature to comfort themselves. I know there was a kindness that followed her, protected her and felt her loneliness, her babbling nonsense, on a mission to nowhere, frightened and frightening. I think to myself, if we could just reach a little further, but we're all too polite, we're all too bounded, we're all too shut down an individual. I imagine the five-year-old child presenting her with a dandelion of sincere love, unconditional love, intentional love, to be placed in a washed-out jam jar by the traffic-rattled window of a ground-floor one-bed flat. What happened to us? What island nature cut us from others, leaving us high on our imagined pedestals, gazing with full flowing cloaks of arrogance on the idiots, the scum, the snobs, the yobs, the white middle class? Every gathering, every community has a mystic, a joker, a king, a queen, a mad, mad, mad one. And I think she is the queen of Hastings, thin and exposed, shameless and satisfied, but alone. I'd be that child, I'd be that man, filled with courage before the queen, knelt in respect with a fist full of flowers.